Hey guys, it's me, Nicolette Mashile, and today I want to talk a little bit about the payment holidays that have been announced by some of our banks in South Africa. And if you look at globally, some of the countries have also put in debt moratoriums and mortgage suspensions on some, or oh, well, they've put in mortgage suspensions. So now, just to be able to contextualize that, right, I owe FNB 1.5 million rand right now on my bond loan, of one of my bonds, right? So essentially, I still need to pay FNB 1.5 million rand. Now, in the last month, I was charged an interest of minus 12,276, right? So let me just repeat that so that it's very clear to everybody. In the last month, I was charged an interest of minus 12,276,000 rand, plus the 57, 000, 57 rand that is charged as a management fee or an account management fee. So essentially, those are the fees that are, and, and I call them fees because it's an interest fee and plus the management fee. So those two amounts are the amounts that get charged on my account. Remember that the interest is calculated based on the interest rate that you've been given against the outstanding balance that you actually owe the bank, right? Very important for you to understand that. And then every single month, there's actually a 57 rand that goes off on your uh, loan account because that is being kept by the government or the national credit uh, regulator, and that's the fee that actually goes off. So over and above your actual installment that you are being charged, those are also the amounts that you actually also incur every single month. So what does this actually mean if you are on a debt um, payment holiday or a payment, a repayment holiday, as many would love to call it? It means that the bank defers that installment amount, that installment repayment amount that you would normally pay every single month. Now, depending on where you are in terms of your loan, a portion of it goes to the interest that is being charged and the other portion goes to the capital amount that you actually owe. So for instance, last uh, month I paid 19,000 rand on my bond. So 12,000 of that 19,000 essentially was servicing the interest portion of the actual loan and the balance of it then went to the capital amount of money, right? And that's how the outstanding balance gets lowered where the portion goes to the capital amount of money. So what happens when you defer a, a, a loan repayment? Essentially, as the banks have already said, the interest will still be charged. The 57 rand fee will still be charged. Let me repeat that. The interest will still be charged and the 57 rand management fee will still be charged. And the reason why I don't specifically say how much the interest is, is remember that the interest is going to change every single month as long as you are deferring any type of a repayment. What do I what mean? What they're essentially saying is that they will then capitalize that amount of money into your outstanding balance. But let's look at it correctly again. Every single month I get charged against my interest rate that the bank has given me. So this month, it's 12,000 rand. So what happens is that that 12,000 rand, had I not paid my installment, it would have, if it was not offset by my payment, it would have been paid into the 1.5 that I owe. So now I would be owing 1,512,000 1, 1, rand, right? Now, when the next month comes and my interest is, is, is calculated and charged again, it no longer is calculated against the 1.5 million, it's calculated against the 1.5 million, 12,000 rand plus the 57 rand, right? So now it goes slightly higher. And I think it's really important for you to be able to understand that because it will happen for three months, well, essentially two months right? Because the first one generally is the one that will go off against the outstanding balance that you have currently. So what then happens that what the bank is saying is that they will then capitalize that into the amount that you actually owe. So after the three months, they will then recalculate a new repayment amount for you. So again, that will probably be slightly higher because they need to be able to recover those three months that they actually deferred your payment. Now, if you look at this, you might think, oh, I don't really want to do this. But what is the payment holiday? What is it supposed to actually do? It is supposed to bring relief, especially to small businesses like Standard Bank has put out, so that they can at least manage their cash flow, which means that they can pay other suppliers if they are outstanding, who might not be able to give them this uh, payment holiday, but also be able to pay salaries for their employees, which is a good thing because we want employees to be paid, especially during this outbreak of Corona, where businesses uh, trading is going to be disturbed or interrupted. So in, on, on one side, it's really a good thing. But on the other side, in the long run, it might not be good for you. So what am I actually saying? My 
opinion, and it's not advice, remember, I don't give advice, is that if you are able to service your debt, please do pay it. Don't take a debt uh, repayment or a payment holiday just because you can and because the bank allows it. If you do have savings or reserves and the business can afford without it being compromised to be able to pay and service those debts, please do service them. It is going to be very important for you in the long run. And please then be able to pay people's salaries and not get yourself into arrears on your other accounts where you might not be getting a debt relief or a payment um, holiday. Secondly, if your business can have some sort of emergency account, please make sure that you still supply and supplement that emergency account. Let's try and make as possible that we do have emergency accounts. They don't just... Um, they, they're not important only for uh, personal accounts and individual accounts, but also small businesses definitely need to have those um, 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 emergency funds. And then last but not least, guys, it is absolutely important to start looking at how can your business still stay afloat? What are other ways in which your business can really keep itself going? I am worried myself. I am supposed to be launching the Financial Bunny Gym in the next couple of weeks. My business is a consultation business. I actually created this beautiful gym where I've put in everything. I've put in a snack bar, I've put in a bar, I've put in a debt um, room or a debt fun room. You know, I've, I've, I've gone to the lens to try and make it as comfortable as possible, create a space where we can comfortably speak about our dates. But the reality is that we do need to have social distancing so that we don't spread the coronavirus. So that means that I can't see clients. I can't start making people pay for membership. What then can I do? I actually reached out to a business similar to mine in the United States in New York, and they said to me, Nicolette, we're using Google Hangouts. We're using Skype, we're using Zoom to be able to consult with our clients with creating content for them so that they know what to do right now. So for me, there is a way in which I can mitigate the situation. I'm asking you, and I'm not saying it's going to be easy, but I'm asking you as a small business to try and find ways in which you can keep your business going. And if there isn't ways in which you can make money, you can still keep yourself as relevant as possible by spreading the positive message of all the precautionary measures that the uh, department or uh, the president has actually put out. The most crucial thing right now is for small businesses to be kept alive. Keep your hands on that steering wheel. What about your personal finances? I think the same goes, the same sentiment goes for personal finances. There might be a debt moratorium that might be put out. There might be payment holidays. In actual fact, this payment holiday thing is nothing new. It's always been there, but of course it was on a case-for-case -case basis where the banks were looking at your actual finances and saying, yes, you do qualify. What Standard Bank has said right now is that if you are a small business in good standing and not in arrears, you will automatically qualify. And if you don't want it, you just need to call your bank and opt out. Very important right now that if it does get stretched, and I think in some instances, some of the banks have made some interventions to to extend it to even personal and individual banking. Make sure that if you do not need it and you can cut down some way, cut down those destructive expenses. If you are in isolation or you are keeping social distancing or you're working from home, make sure that you channel that petrol money you know, into, into savings so that you do pay off the debt as much as possible. I, again, will say if you do not need the relief, from a payment holiday, rather not take one right now. Take it when you actually really need it. As I said, if you really, really need it. And I think the one last thing that is really important as individuals when we're dealing with our personal finances and our banks, remember the banks really, really do not want you to default on your payments. So this is the right time. If you're feeling pressured, if you're feeling under any type of financial distress or pressure, this is the time to be reaching out to your banks. Very, very important, guys. I even last night reached out to my um, 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 landlords where my gym is going to be. And I said, listen, I'm going to be paying rent for the next couple of months. We don't know what, is, what South Africa is going to look like in the next couple of months. And I'm going to be paying rent essentially for businesses not trading, you know. And, 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 and they've really said, listen, Nicolette, we, we also depend on rental income to be able to keep us afloat. But we are in conversations with the bank so that we can find some sort of mitigating ways 
case so that we can all soften the blow of this coronavirus outbreak and what it's doing to the economy. So I think it's also important for you if you're feeling financially distressed and you feel like, listen, I'm not going to make it, especially, you know, our freelancers, our artists, the people that are in um, um, no pay, no work, no pay jobs. This is the right time for you to reach out to your bank, have a conversation, have an honest conversation, and, and, and you will be very surprised at how they will react. I think everybody's feeling the pinch, including the banks themselves. The Reserve Bank has tried to help us with easing, you know, by, by cutting down interest rates. It is our time now to also play our part as South Africans. I love you guys, and we will all get out of this one way or another. And it's only because we will all go, we are all going to stand together as a country and fight the coronavirus. A virus. It's, it's, it's not beyond us, guys. It's not beyond us. The trick now is not to panic. The trick now is to remember that we are as vulnerable as the most vulnerable person in our communities. So please remember your helpers, your, your it's domestic workers, your garden um, services, please, your security guards, if they are non-essential right now, rather let them stay at home. These people travel using taxis and all that stuff. If they can't, and you really, really can't, let's arm them, let's buy them masks, let's buy them gloves, let's really tackle this thing as a country, as a beautiful South Africa that we really are, because I really believe that South Africa has so much potential and so much greatness. Please call your parents, call home, call anybody that needs to be reminded that the social distancing is a call by our president. It is a call for all of us. Remind everybody that is showing any symptoms, Uguti Yazin, it's, it's time now. Pagama South Africa, Ikesha Lifigile. Pagama South Africa, Ikesha Lisondele, for us to show our unity. I love you guys. Mwah.